Hello and welcome back to Let the Stone Speak. I'm Brent Nuktagal here in Jerusalem, Israel, this very chilly January morning. We've got a very exciting program for you today. We're going to be talking about the Ophel excavations and specifically the 10th century BCE gatehouse that's directly below me. To just get your bearings, you might be able to see the Mount of Olives uh, in the background behind me. Just up here to, to your left is the southern wall of the Temple Mount. And then to your right down the hill is the ancient city of David. So this area of the Ophel is just north of the city of David along this ridge before you get to the Temple Mount area. Um, what we're going to do as we focus on the, the gatehouse and go through some of the archaeological proofs for the gatehouse, we will, um, I will just let you know that we've covered a lot of this information in print form in the latest edition of Let the Stone Speak, our magazine. Uh, so if you miss some of the details that we'll discuss, uh, you certainly can go back to the, to the magazine and, and request a copy or go online and read it yourself. And then you'll be able to, you'll be able to catch up on this, some of these details. I also think it's really important if you are a tour guide in Israel coming to this site, um, or if you don't come to this site and you're a tour guide in Israel and the people that you tour are interested in biblical Jerusalem, you definitely need to come uh, and see these remains. And it might be difficult for you to guide this area uh, just because there's not been too much that's made its way to, to the public square. So this video will hopefully help the guides uh, with that. And then also if you want just more of a personal induction, uh, an understanding of this area and the excavations and what was found here, you certainly can contact me. Uh, the email address you can write to is letters at armstronginstitute.org. And I'll be happy to, to fill you in on any, any details and even visit the site with you if you want to understand more. We really want to see more people come to this site. This is the only uh, Israelite period, uh, uh, biblical period gatehouse here in Jerusalem um, that's fully accessible to the public and so it's extremely important uh, for you to, to visit this site. So we're going to go down to the area and you'll get uh, some, some insight into the dating of this structure. So I'm down here in the middle of this gatehouse. Uh, it's quite difficult to make out all the ancient walls right now as it stood going back 3,000 years. The main reason is that for this is because we're in an area of Jerusalem that has been repeatedly demolished and rebuilt, demolished and rebuilt. This big wall behind me, the Byzantine period city wall, this is 1500 years after these walls just to my left. And even this wall just to my left was, was carved into a thousand years after King Solomon during the time of, of King Herod. And so it's quite difficult to make out the gatehouse, which is why we're doing this video. I'm hoping from this angle that we'll be able to overlay uh, a graphic representation of how these, how this gate worked, the different gate chambers along here. I'm standing in the, the thoroughfare, the middle passageway that comes from outside the city back there to inside the city. And then just to my left, you've got a very complete uh, chamber. And then there's another one uh, further over to, to my left. And then there would have been two more to here to the right with potentially another two, five and six chambers going back to Solomon's time as well. You might be very familiar with different six-chambered gates throughout Israel. These are known as the Israelite style gate or the Israelite gate with six chambers just because they are found repeatedly during Israelite period occupation of these cities, constructions. And they're also found um, very similar in design and, and structure. And we have an article about that on our website. I'll leave a, an art, a link to the sh in the show notes for that article. We also talked about the similarities between those gates found in Megiddo, Hatzor, and Gezer, three cities uh, in Israel, and this gate as well. We discussed that last week with uh, Christopher Eames. And so you can go back to that to find the greater context behind the significance of this gate and how it relates to those others that have been well documented. This one, however, hasn't been that well documented into the public spheres, which is why we're going to do this video. So this excavation, um, which was conducted, first of all, by Benjamin Mazar, the late Benjamin Mazar, Hebrew University professor and president, and then in, in his late 70s, and then him and his granddaughter, Dr. Elot Mazar, came back here in 1986 and discovered uh, some of these walls. And then Elot Mazar returned in 19, uh, 2009 and 10 to basically uncover what you see today. And then there was some um, walkways that were put in to make this accessible uh, to the public. So what we're going to talk about now is go through several areas 
uh, around here to show you what was found in these areas relating to King Solomon's time or the 10th century BCE. Uh, and, and, and then you'll be able to you know, come to a conclusion yourself about when this gatehouse uh, was built. So if you can think about it in general, um, you have the entrance of the city coming from this direction behind me. Coming up along this boardwalk is how you would have entered, come along into the gatehouse, make your left right angle turn, and then come into the city uh, from it's King Solomon's time all the way through till the end, till Jeremiah's time, till the, the city was destroyed by the Babylonians. We're not going to talk about the destruction of this building. Uh, that We'll save that for another podcast. But I just want to get you to understand the function of, of this gate. Um, so outside there, that's outside the city of Jerusalem. And we are now in the gate and going up towards the Temple Mount area on the Ophel. You're inside the city from King Solomon's time. What we'll do now is talk about the area that is just behind me, the exterior of the gatehouse, and we'll talk about some of the dating of the discoveries from down there. So I'm standing right now on bedrock, uh, just beside the eastern wall of the gatehouse. To get your bearings about how it used to look, you can imagine this area in which I'm standing as being filled with dirt. Nobody used to be walking down here when this gatehouse was in use uh, during the biblical period. Instead, the floor layer where people would be walking is kind of the same layer as where the boardwalk is today. And you would enter from this direction. You would continue heading northwards along this boardwalk, and then you would make your right angled turn and go into the gatehouse proper. So I'm actually on the outside of the city in an area that used to be filled full of dirt. Now, this excavation, the excavation of this area only took place in 2009 and 2010. When the top of the gatehouse was found in 1986 and 1987, this was still filled up with earth. And this was one of the goals of Elat Mazar in, in 2009 and 10, was to come back, remove one of these walls that was above from the Herodian period, and dig down here and see if we could find any datable material to touch this wall. Now, as far as the wall goes itself, it's absolutely massive. This corner stands at about six meters. It's some of the nicest and tallest preservation uh, from the Iron to a period going back to the time of, of King Solomon 3,000 years ago. You can see that part way up, there's a correctional course just above my head where the, the, it, it juts in a little bit for the remainder of the gatehouse. And then just in front of me uh, is potentially an additional wall that, from the same period that connects against this, uh, this, the gatehouse chamber. So when this area was excavated in 2009 and 10, all the earth was removed. This lower portion where I'm standing here, the datable material that came out of it dated from the Middle Bronze Age, so around the time of Abraham, all the way through till an ending during the early Iron II A, or this period that belongs to King Solomon's time. So there's nothing earlier, nothing later than that, that was found down here, which readily acknowledged the presence, the prior presence of this wall. So this is really great datable material uh, to give us the, the date in which, or the, the earliest time in which this wall would have been built, sometime again uh, around, a th or just after 1000 BCE. Discovered inside the fill here, all the earth uh, that was sent to be wet sifted was the oldest piece of writing that has ever been found in Jerusalem. This dates from the 14th century BCE, so about 400 years before King Solomon. Uh, it's in Arcadian, we call it Jerusalem 1, is what uh, Elat Mazar called it, just because it was the first uh, earliest Arcadian uh, uh, impression or Arcadian piece of writing that was found in Jerusalem. And so that was just a, an amazing discovery from here as well. But the main reason that this area is important is because the fill that was used to raise the level of the floor, the latest possible finds of that in these lower portions belates to dates uh, to King Solomon's time, giving some great datable material for the gatehouse itself. So I'm now standing in the inside uh, passageway of the gatehouse. I'm inside the city from where this shot has been taken is, is outside, just at the entrance to the gatehouse. And some really important discoveries were made here going back to 1986 and 87 and then being fully excavated in 2009 and 10 uh, by Elot Mazar. 
the, the grate that I'm standing on is the ancient floor level. This is the floor level that people would have traversed into Jerusalem from, from 3,000 years ago, all the way up to the time that Jerusalem was destroyed. And what they did when they put these, um, uh, uh, put the walkway up here is they left, a little, they put some concrete down so that you would get the concept that it wasn't made of gray, metal anciently, it was actually a limestone floor that continued all the way along here. Now this limestone floor was actually discovered and excavated in 2009 and 10, um, continuing for a space of about 10 meters. So this is what you want in archeology. span You want to find floors because it shows that the area was inhabited. The stuff that's on the floor, the stuff that's under the floor, helps you date the walls that that floor touched up against. So this is critical for the dating of this structure. Now this wall right here is uh, uh, basically the upper structure of the gatehouse. Um, and it continues all the way down and sits on bedrock as well. So when this area was excavated in 2009, and we'll show a picture of this hopefully, uh, so you get a, a view of what was remaining. It was a little bit piecemeal. I mean, we had a good 10 meter stretch uh, along here. And, but parts of it were eaten into by later period construction. From King Herod's time, he digs down and removes whatever's there. Uh, he removes the floor that was there from a thousand years before. However, we did find the floor, the lime, crushed limestone floor, touching some of the architecture from a lot earlier, particularly this wall. And it, it, um, what was discovered was that the, the limestone floor touched the wall, and then underneath the wall, there was a fill. Basically, earth that's brought in to raise the level and even it out so the flat floor could be put on top. So we have the floor itself, and the material that was found on top of the floor dates to the very end of the Iron Age, dates to the destruction of Jerusalem around that time uh, at the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. But what we're really interested in is when was the floor laid? When was this first put down? When was the fill first put there in order to account for the uh, undulating bedrock to make a flat surface? And critically, then when was this wall built? as this is part of the whole above structure for the gatehouse itself. So Elot Mazar, when she returned here in 2009, she did something quite smart. She recognized that this was a, a thoroughfare, ancient thoroughfare, thoroughfare that was in use for a 400 years or so. And so she decided that because you would replace a, a limestone floor often to keep the same level uh, of, the, of the gatehouse, but it would get worn, it would get used, you'd have to bring in more crushed limestone. What she did was she separated the, the, the material that came, or the pottery that came from the very upper part of the fill, which was directly to below the limestone floor, and the lower 50 centimeters of the fill that was resting on bedrock, yet still coming up again, touching this rock. And this was a, a great decision, because had she not done this, you would have had material from the end of the Iron Age or from the time that Jerusalem was destroyed all the way through till the time of, its, till the time of Solomon, all together as one. And you date a fill by the latest finds in it. So this whole fill going all the way to bedrock would then, and then thus included this wall would have been dated then to sometime at the end of the Iron Age and when Jerusalem was destroyed or slightly there, slightly before. But because, because she made this separation between the lower fill and the upper fill. And this separation was not based on any type of change in color, change in consistency. It was technically basically the same stuff. It was an arbitrary decision she made. Bottom 50 centimeters, we'll separate it. Top 50 centimeters of this meter of fill will separate. Uh, and then we'll be able to catch to see if there is some type of difference between the fill that was brought in originally and the slightly corrupted fill because they replaced this floor so often. And as she did that, she found material from the 10th century in this lowest fill. Nothing later was in it. The, 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 the type of fill that is here, the material that came out, matched the fill that is on the outside of the gatehouse by the eastern wall, which I talked about before. And this was critical because it shows that not only was the very foundational courses of the gatehouse built during King Solomon's time, but also the above, above ground structure was also built. The stuff that would have been visible, like this wall would have been visible to those ancient people was also built during King Solomon's time as well. And so if you visit the site today, you might see some, an ugly metal grate, 
um, and not understand why they put it here. Basically, they've got the grate so you can still see the, the foundational walls of the gatehouse underneath, but they put some of this concrete here um, that kind of looks like a crushed limestone floor so that you can get the sense of how people anciently during the biblical period would have entered Jerusalem through this gatehouse. So I'm standing inside uh, the fully preserved uh, south southern chamber of the gatehouse. So this is quite remarkable um, that there's been such good preservation here. Just off to my left, I've got some recreations of the pottery vessels that were found inside here, uh, some potentially some storage vessels for water or something like that. And so the very top layer, when it was discovered back in 1986, it belonged, and actually a bit earlier, belonged to this period relating to right at the end of the, of the first temple period before Jerusalem was destroyed. But again, we're not talking about the end period. We're worried about when the building itself was constructed. Now you can see there's several different types of, of architecture here. You have the above ground wall that people would have seen when they visited the site, when they would have come into this uh, chamber. You can see that there's a course uh, that is a little bit, that juts out by about a foot um, part way down. And then what I'm standing on right now is a, a stone plinth, as Dr. Mazar called it, or this stone platform that, that is basically the, the big um, the structure underneath, the foundation for the whole gatehouse complex. Now, you don't really see any of these elements from the outside of the gate, from the eastern wall, but you do see them inside here, uh, which is fascinating. Now, obviously, these little branches here, uh, this tree that's not ancient, this is growing up here based on a bit of neglect uh, for, from this archaeological site. Uh, hopefully we can remove those uh, sometime soon. So what about the things that were discovered inside the fill? Now there was only one floor layer that was discovered inside here relating uh, or one relating to the walls and this was a, a floor that, that continued at the same height as the, the floor from the central passageway. Uh, this, the limestone floor actually came partly into and through this passageway, showing that it was an entrance, it is a doorway uh, coming into this, this chamber. The, 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 pl the floor itself rose above this course of stones, actually, and touched the, the, this course of stones here. So everything that was underneath inside this fill was was uh, somewhat homogenous going down to the very base sitting on the on the plinth. So again, we have this concept of original foundation, uh, walls that are constructed, fill brought in to raise the level of the floor, and then a limestone floor over the entire thing. Now again, the material that's on the very top relates to the destruction, the end of use of the building. But what is related, what is the dating of the fill? Now, there is some disagreement between Dr. Elot Mazar, Dr. Ariel Vinderbaum, who excavated with her in 2009 and 10, just outside of this area, uh, uh, about the dating of the material that was found in here. Dr. Elot Mazar did not excavate all of this, uh, in two th any of this in 2009 and 10. It was already excavated in 86 and 87. And I wonder if she came, if she excavated this, if there was still some earth in here in 2009, whether she would have incorporated the same method she did of creating an artificial separation between the above fill and the lower fill, um, because it might have helped with getting a really clean uh, dating material from this lowest fill. Regardless, what she wrote back in 2000, 1986 and 87 about this fill when she excavated it all together as one locus, as one group putting it in the same pottery bucket, she wrote that it seemed to belong to the 9th century. So this is about 100 years after King Solomon. And she even wrote there that perhaps some of the vessels had some wheel burnishing uh, on them, which this is a feature that comes into practice uh, after uh, the time of Solomon. So she said, well, it's, since we've got the wheel, wheel burnishing there uh, in, some of these, in some of this material, it probably dates to the 9th century. Um, however, when she came out back and looked at the pottery in 2011, 2000, uh, after this excavation in 2009 and 10, she said really the, the, the burnishing is so fragmentary that it's quite difficult to discover uh, whether it was wheel burnished or hand burnished. Hand burnishing, of course, being something that did belong to King Solomon's time. So as far as the dating of this chamber goes, I would say it's probably a little bit more inconclusive 
as opposed to the dating on the, e on, the, uh, on the bedrock, on the eastern side, and even the dating um, that, was, that was more specific in the pa central passageway. Nevertheless, the majority of the discoveries that came from this fill, they did belong to the early 10th century um, and, and earlier, rather, or the 10th century and earlier, the time period of Solomon, rather than the very latest, you know, the 8th century or the 7th century BCE. But I think if you visit the site, it's really good to look into this chamber because you see this, the way that the building was constructed itself, the gatehouse was constructed. You can see some of the, the remains or a replica of the remains. And then you see some of the work that could potentially still be done, perhaps going through some of this floor, uh, some of this to find you know, in the guts of the structure itself, some hopefully some better dating material that will give us a conclusive date for this chamber itself. Well, that concludes our tour of the Ophel Gatehouse and specifically the dating to the 10th century BCE uh, from King Solomon's time. If you want more details about this, certainly do go to armstronginstitute.org and you can read an article entitled The Forgotten Gatehouse. It's about this, the discovery of this and its dating to King Solomon's time, going through more detail uh, of how Dr. Mazar came to this conclusion based on the archaeological evidence. Also, again, if you would like to tour this area, we do offer tours. You can write an email to tours at armstronginstitute.org. That'll make sure that we receive your email. You can talk about the dates that you would like to come to the site. Again, this is probably the most important or one of the most important archaeological sites in Jerusalem from the biblical period. Uh, definitely going to King Solomon's time, something that's going to be conclusively dated to that period. This is it. And yet, as you see around me and seen around me today, it's open for the public and there's just not many people here. And it is, I believe, a travesty to the site that there isn't more people that are visiting. And some of that's probably based on um, the understanding. When you come here, it's not too easy to find out the details about the dating or about what the structure looked like. Um, but perhaps we can help with that. So if you do want a tour, you can certainly write an email about that. Um, if you want to, again, understand more about this structure, please do subscribe to our magazine, uh, Let the Stone Speak. It goes into details about this building as well. To subscribe, you can just write an email to letters at armstronginstitute.org. Simply put your name and address, and we'll make sure you get a free subscription for a whole year to the magazine. Thanks very much for being with me today, and I'll talk to you next week.